it's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for another tutorial video. We're going to go to the top 10 lists of shortcuts and hotkeys in Hearts of Iron 4. My objective for this video is to find something you do not already know about Hearts of Iron 4. And if one of these top 10 you have not already heard of, hit a like and let me know in the video. My objective is to get you to like this video by you discovering something new. And if you're going to hit that like button, that'll let me know, guys. Okay, first of all, top 10 list at number 10 is shift click to production lines to move them to the top or bottom of your production queue. So in the production queue, you have a list of all your production lines prioritized by the highest at the top or the lowest at the bottom. You have the ability to shift them up and down individually one at a time. One of the abilities is you can hold down shift and that shifts it all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top depending on which one you click. And it is just a way click, faster way than having to click 10 times to run through a huge production queue, which will save you tons of time. At number nine, space to pause and plus and minus keys to speed up and slow down the game. Wow, if you don't know this one, this will blow my mind. So, space key unpauses the game and pauses the game. If you are playing multiplayer, it is a pause break key. I'm sure it's the pause break key. Yeah, it's the pause and break key on just top of page up and page down. If you play multiplayer, they've moved it just for the purpose you can't spam it too often. Um, and also, you've got the plus and minus keys on the number pad, as well as next to backspace. Actually, no, tell the light. Backspace, the one to the backspace, the plus and minus next to backspace doesn't actually work. It's on the ones on the number pad. Remember, you need number lock turned on. You can plus and minus to speed up and slow down the game space to pause it up. Very, very, very important if you're particularly wanting to execute orders to pause the game when you need to. And it's just a really quick way to have to go all the way up here and click on this, pause, move back and forth. It's faster. Put it that way. You know that. At number eight, right click on a division, forward slash, or air wing or navy to move to where it is located on the map. So particularly here, we have an army of 104 divisions. If we particularly want to look for a certain division, in this case, this light tank division, we hover over it and right click, and there it is, right in the Ukrainian-Romanian border. Or for instance, this mountain division here, well, what do you know? It's in the marsh, right on the border of Poland. Or you can do the same with air wings. You can right click on that air wing and it's there in Sevastopol. Uh, actually, that's the Navy, sorry. And the air wing, I'd say tactical bombers. Just say the location, but I guess you can right click if you don't know where Leningrad is. And there you go. Whoa, the air wing appears to be in Leningrad. There you go. Just a really, really fast way of finding individual divisions if you can't find them. And you can always bring up the long, big list of army as well. And you're like, oh, where's this army that's not, this division that's not assigned to an army? Oh, what do you know? It's on the ban border of the Japanese puppet. There you go, guys. A quick way of finding divisions, particularly those odd, nasty ones that are, like, far away and you don't know where they actually are. Anyway, guys, that's that. At number seven is H to hold. So, let's just, in this instance, we're going to click on the border of... Poland, move our troops into position, and we are going to declare war on Poland. And one of the good things is if an army, if a battle is not going the way you'd like it to go, aka uh, you're not winning, you're losing, um, you can declare war and then just press H to stop. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I use this quite a lot, and it's very good for strategic planning because sometimes battles aren't going in your favor. Let's say we're just going to tell them to attack now, we've gone to war. Uh, we're going to make the game go forward now. They're going to attack. And as you can see, everyone is winning and everyone is, everyone is moving forward. I'm going to pause the game with space again. But let's just say this arm, this battle isn't winning. So I can just select these divisions, press H, and they will hold. In this case, they're not. It's probably because the game hasn't progressed enough. Let me just uh, a few days ago. But there you go. So it looks like when they initially uh, attack, you can't... I think there's like an initial window where if they attack initially you have to wait maybe a few hours before you can assign them a different order. 
in this case they can hate, press H to stop and you can stop them individually. So what you can specifically do is stop the attack order and find only attacks that are act actively winning and that way you're not losing supplies or equipment by pushing forward, which is always useful. This also works for navies as well. If you see a navy moving across the crowd, you can tell them to stop. Or if, for instance, the, the, your armed forces are doing something really weird, like the pathfinding has gone really weird and they're going around all the map, you can just select the division and press H to hold them in position. And then they will redraw the order, which is the most convenient route, which yet again will save you loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of time. And H. Oh, what? Well, you know, they have stopped. And they're not moving. At number six, right click on a country in map mode to launch the diplomacy for that country. So in this case, I've just declared war on Poland. Uh, you can do it manually by going into, where is it? I think it's, I don't usually do it this way. I usually found my own way. So you can go to diplomacy and I guess you can click through each of the countries and declare war, justify war. But one of the really, really quick ways of doing, let's say I want to go to war with Turkey, right click on Turkey. There you go. You've got your options available. This is the same way it is in Victoria too. And I think it's in EU4 as well. So there you go. You've got the option to make diplomatic orders. Let's just say, oh, Japan, let's help them out. I want to send them a lend -lease. Boom, 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 done. There you go. Nice and fast. Same with India. Right click and get the options there immediately. Um, I think they only added this recently in Victoria 2 in the beta patch as well. It wasn't in the initial game. And oh, I fucking love this so much because it saves. It usually is about four or five clicks to get to where you need to be. But now it's just one click and boom, you're on the diplomacy screen. I love that one. That's awesome. At number five is hold down enter to auto close messages or say yes to confirmation events. So one of the common things that happened mid to late game is if you declare war, and because there's so many different members of an alliance, particularly Axis or allies, as they all get called to the war, you get bombarded with pop-ups saying that these countries are participating in the war now. Sometimes you get about 10 pop-ups in a row. And it's quite annoying because you have to click through each of them one by one and get rid of them. One of the easy things to do is you can just hold down the enter key and it will repeatedly press enter loads of times and click through them really, really quickly. I can't show you that now, but the best example I can show you is if you get a confirmation dialogue. For instance, in this case, uh, in Moscow with the planes. Uh, you click on to remove an air wing to put the planes back into the pool and it'll ask you if you are sure. If you press enter, it'll confirm that. But if you hold down enter, like I'm doing now, and just click on the trash cans, it'll automatically confirm the message you're giving them. Same applies to if you want to disband a navy. You can just hold down enter and it'll disband it automatically. Don't know why you'd do that, but the option's there. Same for disbanding a division two. Doesn't ask you if you want to be sure. You could just automatically say yes to it. And of course you can do that with all the other air wings as well. Uh, but there's a, another option. It saves you the confirmation box. It saves you a lot of clicks and moving your house around so you can save yourself loads of time. It's one of my favorites, that one. I really, really like that one. Uh, there's a few mods as well that bug out as well and you get splashed with like loads of events because the, the mods mods not complete and it gives you lots of generic events and whatnot you can just press enter and it'll like blast through all of those events instantly and that will save you like lots and lots of clicks and loads and loads of time so that's a good one at number four shift right click on c zones to remove orders from them i'm not sure if a lot of people know this one i i used to in the old days uh click on hold orders to reset the orders um but this is what you can do so I'm not sure if this is going to be the best example. No, I think we're probably better off going to the Pacific. Is there a fleet around here? I bet there isn't going to be, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Uh, there's a few destroyers and submarines. So you actively put them in sea zones. In this case, Sea of Japan, the coast of Japan, Sea of Okoski? Of Koski? I have to select the one that I can't pronounce right. Let's go for Western, Northern, North Pacific. <laughs> I could say it. Anyway, there's the three C zones, and you're like, oh, I can't right click, I can't add any more. What you can do is hold down shift and then right click on a C zone and it will manually remove them. That way it's quicker than than going into hold then reassigning them ones you want. Uh, it's just quicker to shift and remove the ones you want. It's just quicker to do it that way. I always think that's a pretty good one. I like that one too. I use that quite often. I think in the old days I did used to do the hold order one because it removes them all. But then again, remember, the reason why you're doing these shortcuts is you're saving yourself time, you're saving themselves clicks, you're making yourself more efficient when you play the game, and that definitely does that. 
Okay. At number three. Shift clicking to stack orders. This is a bit of a no-brainer, but if you don't know this one, well, here you go. I'm going to teach you it. So, when you assign an order, in this case, we're going to tell these guys to attack here. You can, instead of right-clicking, you can assign a brand new order, which cancels all the previous orders. You can hold shift and assign new orders. In this case, we're going to make uh, the, fl the flying spaghetti monster. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I think I've broken the game. There you, go, you can, there you go, look at that mess. Beautiful. That is an order that Stalin would be proud of. Um, anywho, yeah, so there you go. You can assign multiple orders. This is pretty good in this case when you want to grab these divisions. Go here and then right click here. So you want to go here, then here. Uh, same here as well. Go here and then push here. Um, and then you can guys push into here and you can create like a, a push where it's like a, a, a kind of like a spearhead I suppose when you're attacking the specific the zones yeah it gives you a kind of a an overhead example of it moving forward I just wanted to show it moving forward to give you kind of example there you go so it's, it's moving forward the guys are stuck in place and you can kind of see the spearhead forming as they're moving forward as they're all going to meet in the middle looks like these are the easy ones to grab hold of though and they're pushing in. Be aggressive. Oh, and they've surrounded them. <laughs> but you get the idea. You can stack multiple orders. You can also do this with fleets as well. Uh, if you've got them on hold position, you can assign them to go different locations. Never really needed to do that, but you can do it if you want to. Um, yeah, I find this quite effective if you want to customize your own spearhead orders. Very similar to this. This is very, 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 very messy. If you wanted to do it more organized, you could spread out the front lines, so therefore they couldn't surround you as easily. Uh, the Polish army isn't very strong, so we can wipe them out pretty easy. But it just gives you a rough example of shift-clicking and what you can potentially do with it. Uh, a few people in my comments have mentioned it, so I thought I'd bring it up. And it's, uh, it's the one that I use quite a lot. That's why it's so high in the ratings. At number two... Is S to split? Oh my god, guys. S to split. So, you got a navy. The button to manually do it is there, but S is to split it in half. And there you go, you split it into two. Works exactly the same way if you've got an army. For instance, we've got 104 divisions selected, press S, split it into two. It's very effective, like if, for instance, you want to select all the armies, right click here, S, right click here, S, right click here, S. So there you go, you've split it into two halves and then a further half here. Remember the first one you're assigning has the most troops and then uh, halved and then halved again. There you go, 50%, I guess that's 30, no we're not going to go into the mass. We're not going to have any of those comments guys, please, no negativity in the comments, please, please be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that gives you an option to split them in half. I, I use this more than anything. I th there's there's kind of a weird strategy with this where you can I don't know, let's just move them into position. So you can say if you want to like concentrate your troops on one specific area, you can go here, right click, S here, S here, S here, S here, and then if you remember, if you massively right click everything like if you select the full army and then ss multiple times you always end up with one division so if you want one division to stay behind you can like uh select multiple divisions ssssss and then press h to hold and remember that's going to leave that behind one position that's quite useful if you want to like push forward but leave a division behind that way you can't get encircled it's a combination of the hotkeys that make it really effective s for split h for hold shift and right click into q orders if you you put those all together you can create the absolute best spearhead and that is my number two guys there was a few others that didn't make the list and I'm just gonna go through them really quickly you've got F2 F1 F2 and F3 which is um, your default mode you've got the naval strategic mode and you've got the strategic air modes as well as so you can flip between them that's F1 F2 and F3 I use those quite often. There's also B for railroad. I use this quite often too. It's used as the icon. It's called strategic redeployment, but everyone, I always call it railroad. So instead of clicking on the icon, you can press B and then right click where you want to go and they'll railroad and press B again. Be aware that that is a toggle. It, when you activate and you right click, it doesn't stay on. Oh, right, sorry, sorry, it does stay on. So it's not, it's like a toggle. It's not like a, a one initial order. So you have to assign it 
move, and then risk assign it. Be aware though, if you've got strategic redeployment on and you tried to attack it, it'll say no because you can't attack with strategic redeployment. You have to press B again to disable it and then right click and they'll move manually. And also when you're strategic redeploying, you've got no organization, but I'm, I'm spoon feeding. You guys already know this, you're experts. And anyway, don't forget as well, you've also got the options to create front lines. I use this all the time. So let's grab some divisions, There's some Finnish troops here. So you want to create a front line against the Finland. Z is to create a front line, which is that one, Z or Z depending where you live. X is for front line, which you can right click here. Z, X. And then also if you got the trash can, you can left click to manually remove specific orders. Or you can right click the trash can and it'll ask you to confirm to delete all orders and you can remove them all in one go. So if you've created an awkward mess of front lines and you're like, oh, I've messed up. This is not where I wanted. This is an absolute mess. What was I thinking? This will never work. Stalin is not going to be pleased. You can right click and click OK and all those orders will be trashed. Uh, one final one as well. One final honorable mention is to when you're in the production queue and you want to remove a production line, uh, you can hold shift and click on one of them and it'll ask you to remove them all. And if you click OK, they all go. That potentially could end your game. Be aware of that one. That is actually pretty brutal. Because that means you're going to lose all your production retention for all your production lines. And you ain't going to get it back. So be aware of that one. That's a biggie. At number one. I only recently discovered this one. And this is huge. So, have you ever wondered, like, what is the difference between Mechanize 1 and Mechanize 3? Hmm? Ever wondered what the difference is? Well, if you hold down Shift and click on Multiple... You can bring up multiple windows and actually compare the stats directly to see what the actual differences are. I always thought it was so unbelievably confusing when you're trying to bring up one and then bring another up and like, oh, what was what what changed again? I, I'm not actually too sure. But what you can do now is compare the guns to actually see specifically the differences and you can see them here. There you go. Extra t t defense, 20, 22. Extra two defense for the better gun. Extra soft attack, after breakthrough, extra hard attack. And the best example is going to have to be tanks, for instance. What is the difference between a light tank and a heavy tank? Well, there you go, guys. That is the difference between a light tank and a heavy tank. And you can multiple open multiple ones. So you can fill your screen with loads and loads of them. I only recently discovered this one, guys. It is a big new one for me, too. And it is very, very, very effective, potentially, when you're comparing ships. Um, yeah, getting your head around what makes a different ship different from another is, is sometimes, sometimes an absolute nightmare. But this gives you the luxury of being able to compare stats one for one and actually seeing if that upgrade is actually worth it. Guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe, turn on notifications for more of these kind of videos. And let me know in the comments below that you made it to the end of the video and you would like more of these tips and tricks, tutorials, and maybe even shortcut videos. Guys, if you've had a good day, let me know. And I will see you guys next time. See you soon, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.